Hey, this is Blake with Peaceful Heritage Nursery. And today we're out here in the Paw Paw Grove and we're gonna be checking out some Paw Paw Pest and busting some myths of the disease and insect proof Paw Paw Tree. So let's check out some of the common pests and what you can do about them. If you're out in your Paw Paw Grove and you notice this, you see this browning of the leaves. Oftentimes it's at the top more like this then what you're dealing with is a semina webworm okay so they damage the leaves like this and they'll also eat the twigs so they'll eat the twigs all the way down and uh, can cause a lot of damage they can even kill a, a young tree that's only a few years old Usually one like this, it's fairly established. They're not gonna kill it. They will damage the twigs and this can be an issue. So what you need to do is come out and fully remove those leaves that are damaged. And see, there's the webworms inside. You can really see them. Okay, there they are. See all those? This is a tent caterpillar type insect and they feed on pawpaw and like there's a bunch of them in there. They leave behind all these webs and this frass. They can do a lot of damage very fast. So we're pulling all these off, dropping them in a bucket here and you can fill that bucket with water to destroy them that way, you can also crush them. See, as I pull this leaf apart, you see they're all in there too. So this is an endemic native insect to the region. So if you don't live in the Eastern US, you probably won't have these. But if you live out here in Paul Paul's native range, it's likely they could show up. There they are once again. There's all their droppings on the leaves there. So you've got to get rid of these. Otherwise they will wreak a lot of havoc in your pawpaw grove. Now fluttering around over here is another common pest of pawpaw. That was zebra swallowtail. There they go. These are zebra swallowtail butterflies. And they're beautiful butterfly, so I don't advocate destroying them. However, when you do have young trees, the larva can cause quite a bit of damage. So I will often pick those off and put them on a larger pawpaw tree such as this one, or one even bigger, that's going to be able to take that feeding and it not be a big deal. But if they feed on little trees or seedlings, they can completely destroy them. Another insect that feeds on pawpaws is Japanese beetle. Like this one right here that appears to be taking a nap. This is the damage done. So they, they eat the tissue of the leaves and cause this netting. They tend to do minor damage but they do damage the trees. Typically when you see odd shaped holes like this randomly in the middle of the leaf, that is mollusk damage. So that would be slugs or snails, which really enjoy feeding on pawpaws also. That's a telltale sign of a mollusk is that circular hole. This is Japanese beetle damage. Zebra swallowtail butterflies tend to, they tend to do this sort of a thing where they just eat an entire leaf or half of a leaf like that along the edges and margins of the leaf. This is more Japanese beetle damage. You can see the lacing of the leaves they're doing here. That is Japanese beetles. This is more Japanese beetle damage. So we're out here in the pawpaw grove, one of them anyway. And we're scouting for a semina webworms and other insects. And you can see 
these big beautiful trees well where'd these come from they came from the nursery so these these were supreme grade pawpaw trees that we planted out here and after a couple of years of growth now this is what we've got so under good conditions if you get our supreme grade pawpaw trees this is what you can see years later under good growing conditions meaning organic fertilizer weed control we use these landscape fabric cage around the tree stakes water and fertilizer you can see they're putting on really strong growth and it'll be ready to bear fruit here very soon so this is one of the supreme grade trees that I grafted personally and planted this year it's a mammoth x and i see it has seminal webworms right here so i'm just going to carefully pinch this off without damaging the twigs i'm going to go ahead and take this leaf off too it might have some little caterpillars in there we can't see and it's going in the bucket with the rest so an important aspect of pest control, especially under organic conditions like we do here, is just taking the time to go out and scout your trees and see what is going on with them. Japanese beetle right there. This is a twig that just got snapped off in a storm or something. This is Rappahannock. It has a really upright, much different growing pattern than the rest of them, as you can see. It's unusual. So I just happened to catch a zebra swallowtail butterfly here. They're really beautiful butterflies and they are threatened. And so we don't want to kill them or the larva typically, but they do have to be controlled in a nursery setting or when you're growing small new trees. And so you do have to scout for the larva. So let's see if we can find some larva to show you. So this is a zebra swallowtail larva. You can see they're kind of club shaped. Could easily be confused for a slug or something, but they're not. That's what turns into those beautiful butterflies. This is a very young one here. And you can see its defense mechanism is to push those little antlers out of its head when it's threatened. See this little yellow protrusions there. So we're gonna leave it alone and let it do its thing. It's not gonna harm a tree that's this size. Now, if that was on a very small, freshly planted pawpaw tree, I would remove it and put it on an older tree, such as this, where it's not gonna do much damage. Okay, we have another insect pest, a pawpaw. This little greenish grayish caterpillar here this is a pawpaw leaf roller okay so that's what the insect looks like it gives you an idea of its size it's maybe three quarters of an inch or so it's got that brownish reddish head those little dots and this is what it does to the leaf so it makes this web and it rolls that up. See how that leaf has been rolled up like a little burrito? And it just does its thing in there. Makes a cocoon or whatever after feeding. So this is what pawpaw leaf roller damage looks like. It's similar to the semina webworm. It does make webbing and everything, but it's not a tent caterpillar per se, like the semina webworms are. This one rolls up the leaf like that. So pretty minor damage, but something you might encounter also. This leaf spotting here, this is called Phyllosticta. And so this is a common foliar fungus of pawpaw. You'll notice the black spots with the yellow halos around them. And so this afflicts a lot of pawpaw trees. You can also get spotting on the fruit as well. In severe situations, it can cause cracking of the fruit. And it's something that gets infested on the foliage annually. So it's not systemic. 
and sometimes we even see this in the nursery on grafted trees and seedlings. Typically when I see it on seedlings, I will destroy those seedlings because that's a sign that they are prone to phyllosicta. However, some grafted varieties that are out there are popular grafted varieties people want and they might be prone to phyllosticta too. So sometimes there'll be phyllosticta pr uh, present on those as well. On trees that are resistant, you might just see a little bit of spotting on the leaves like this and not much else. On severely uh, susceptible varieties, you might see bigger, more intense blotching on the leaves and on the fruit as well that leads to cracking, which ruins the fruit. So now, a lot of you are probably naturally asking, what do we do to control these insects on pawpaw trees? So a lot of that's covered in the book. Paul Paul is a complete growing and marketing guide. And Pyganic is my go-to organic spray. Pyganic is made from chrysanthemum flowers. So it's a non-toxic product. It breaks down in the sun in about an hour or so. And so it has a very fast degradation, doesn't do any environmental damage. It will kill, of course, non-target insects like honeybees and stuff. So you gotta be careful. Of course, honeybees are not hanging around on pawpaw trees pretty much ever. So, Pyganic is a great choice for controlling Japanese beetles, ZSB larvae. Not sure about its effect on tent caterpillars or leaf rollers, but it would be worth trying. Also, uh, Spinosad might work well for them, being that they're caterpillars. So those are all some good organic options, as well as just walking around your orchard scouting and pulling off the tent caterpillars and just seeing what's going on out there. So that's always highly recommended too, just checking on your trees and being aware of your local pest and disease pressure and what's going on in the orchard. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit the like and notification bell and you'll be notified when I put out more videos on growing fruits, pawpaws, and all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.